Good day, sir. Good day, classmates. And for today's lesson, I will be the first reporter. And now, let's start for a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. We thank you for your love and protection. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your internal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask this in your most precious name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To start with our discussion, let's have a positive minds, positive hearts, and positive vibes. As we go along with our discussion, I have here a short motivational quotes for us. Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. By Anonymous. We as a learner, we must take the stairs to achieve our different paths of our life. By the way, I am Mary Goldiebol, the first presenter of this topic. In today's lesson, we will be tackled on human flourishing in terms of science and technology. In this topic, we may ask the question, well, what is happiness for you? So, in psychology, happiness is a mental or emotional state of well-being which can be defined by among others. Positive or pleasant emotion ranging from contentment to intense joy. And that is the field of happiness in psychology, how they define what happiness is. To behaviorists, happiness is a cocktail of emotion we experience when we do something good or positive. To be more scientific of perspective, to neurologists, happiness is the experience of a flood hormones released in the brain as a reward for behavior that prolongs survival. So that was the happiness in the different branches of sciences and studies. Next question that I want to ask you is happiness a destination or it is a journey? Alright, so there are two main views when we look at happiness. The first view is what we call the hedonistic view of well-being is that happiness is the polar opposite of suffering. The presence of happiness indicates the absence of pain. Because of this hiddenness, believe that the purpose of life is to maximize happiness, which minimizes misery. We also have one type of happiness which we call eudaimonia, a term that combines the Greek words for good and spirit to describe the ideology. Eudaimonia defines happiness as the pursuit of becoming a better person. Eudaimonists do this by challenging themselves intellectually or by engaging activities that makes them spiritually richer people. Let's talk about more on eudaimonia again. It is from Greek words good and spirit. From the words itself, eudaimonia, shall we say eudaimonia is good spirited, it was originally coined by Aristotle, and this describes the pinnacle of happiness that is attainable by humans. It also one of very important concept of human flourishing, that is eudaimonia. To compare, see the perspective of hedonis or hedonia and eudaimonia, I will present this graph here as you can see in this picture. Hedonists feel good. When you feel good, it's either sweet life or fulfilled life. And, and eudaimonia, feel purpose, it's either void life or dry life. By combining them, the hiddenness and eudaimonia, you will have the fulfilled life. So according to Aristotle, the one that coined the word, there is an end of all the actions that we perform, which we desire for itself, we call it eudaimonia again. Flourishing or happiness, simple as it is, which is desire for itself on sick, with all other things desire on its account. Eudaimonia is a property of one's life when considered as a whole. Flourishing is the highest good of human endeavors and then toward which all actions aim. 
it is success as a human being. The best life is one excellent human activity. That what the one that will experience when you reach this state of eudaimonia and this is called flourishing. So specifically, we are human beings, we will call this human flourishing. Human flourishing came from Nicomachean ethics. This is philosophical inquiry into the nature of good life for a human being. This is actually written by Aristotle's son, Nicomachus, that came from the name Nicomachean Ethics. Human flaws arises as a result of different components, such as number one, pronesis, the habit of making the right decision and taking the right action in context, and relentless pursuit of excellence for the common good. That is we call pronesis. This is one of the areas of the result of human flourishing. And then we also have friendship, wealth, and power. We have four. Good day everyone. My name is Priscilla Taglion Gomez. Today I am going to continue the report about human flourishing. In ancient Greek society, they believe that acquiring this will surely bring the seekers happiness, which in effect allows them to partake the greater notion of what we call the good. As time changes, elements that comprise human flourishing change. This describes that um, every evolution happens, there is knowledge we gain and that way that will help us make changes to ourselves. People found means to live more comfortably, explore more places, develop more products, and make more money. We people exert effort to make ourselves happy. Humans of today are expected to become man of the world, supposed to situate himself in a global neighborhood, working side by side among institutions and the government to be able to reach a common goal. Competition as a means of survival has become a sense. Coordination is the new trend. Eastern and Western conception. Eastern conception. Focus is community-centric. Individual should sacrifice himself for the sake of society. Chinese Confucian system. Japanese Bushido. Encourage studies of literature, science, and art for a greater cause. Western conception, more focused on the individual. Human flourishing as an end. Aristotle view aims to eudomia, the ultimate goal. Western conception deals with individualism, while Eastern conception deals with collectivism. Science and technology and human flourishing. Every discovery, innovation, and success contributes to our pool of human knowledge. Human perpetual need to locate himself in the world of finding proofs to trace evolution. Elicits our ideas of self-importance. Technology is a human activity we excel in as a result of achieving science. Hydrogen. Good is inherently related to the truth. Good day everyone, this is Mel and C. Ingelan with continued discussion. In this session, I will discuss the technology as a way of revealing human flourishing. So let's find out what the technology reveals. Let us first define what technology is. Technology means to an end, which means technology developed with a purpose. Technology is a tool. Can technology is a tool to, for us to have a better living. Can't we imagine without the innovation of technology, it is hard for us to do things manually. Technology is a mode of revealing. So let us now proceed to human flourishing in technology. Involves the rational use of one's individual human potentialities including talents, abilities, and virtues in the pursuit of rationally chosen values and goals. 
science and technology must be treated as a part of human life and needs reflective way of thinking. How can technology be a way of revealing? Technology is a way of revealing because we perceive technology on its essence and purpose. Thus, technology means to achieve man's goal by, by using this as an instrument to give idea of what ex to expect out of technology. An instrument of a human to create well to have a good life and a way of human flourishing. So let's proceed to technology as a mode of revealing. Technology is embody a specific way of revealing the world, a revealing in which human takes power over reality. Technology is a way of revealing that characterizes our time. In shaping our day-to-day -day life, we always face reality, on it, the reality on what is really happening in our world. Every time we perceive or think or interact, by entering into a particular relation with reality. Reality is revealed in a specific way. It is part of human flourishing to engage different activities in our society. Let us all be familiar with a philosopher named Martin Heidegger, which set upon man and a way of revealing in which holds the essence of modern technology. First, it is not something we make, it is a mode of being or of revealing. Second, points that technology even holds a way over beings that we do not normally think as technological. Third, the essence of technology as Heidegger discussed is a primary matter of modern industrial technology. Fourth, technology is a simply practical application of natural science. Heidegger point out technological objects are means for ends and are built operated by human beings. But the essence of technology is something else entirely. He strongly opposes the view that technology is a means to an end or a human activity. Martin Heidegger is a German philosopher who gives us another way to look at technology. He asserts that technology can be understood based on its being and constitutes human activities. Part of human activities is survival. So in order for us to survive, human created a way to discover technology. And the essence of technology made people live happy and due to less effort and less work, May, because of modern technology made by human activity. With all of this revolution, technology has made our life better. That is what technology wants to reveal, that it is created through human activities. And human activities requires our abilities and potential, that part of our human flourishing. The good life. What is meant by good life? Every human being has part to live a good life. The problem is, we all define the phrase good life differently. Some are looking to live an honest life, full of integrity, joy, and happiness. Others seek wealth, social status, and fame, as they are hope this aspect will help them to live the good life. In fact, they directly associate the good life with money and material belongings. So what exactly is the good life and what it contributes? Living the good life means living a life that sets you free, a life that satisfies and fulfills you, that adds happiness, joy, and a sense of purpose to your life. But it also means to live a life that is worthwhile, a life that makes a contribution instead of being solely self-centered. The good life is a life that is not primarily wasted with mundane activities. Instead, it adds value and contributes to making this world a better place. Even more so, it also contributes to your own growth. Therefore, the good life combines aspects of exploration, self-mastery, and civic responsibility with the endeavor to spend your time in a worthwhile manner that both satisfies and fulfills.
It is only through the combinations of this aspect that a joyous and happy life can be truly considered the good life. Aristotle is an ancient Greek philosopher known for his natural philosophy, logic, and political theory. He is one of the greatest thinkers in the history of Western science and philosophy, making contribution to logic, metaphysics, mathematics, physics, biology, botany, ethics, politics, agriculture, medicine, dance, and theater. He is first to classify areas of human knowledge into distinct disciplines such as mathematics, biology, and ethics. He is one of the strongest advocates of liberal arts education, which stresses the education of the whole person, including one's moral character, rather than merely learning set of skills. Aristotelian's Nicomachean ethics is the fundamental basis of Aristotelian's ethics. It is abbreviated as NE or sometimes EN based on the Latin version of the name. It is a treatise on the natures of moral life and human happiness based on the unique essence of human nature. Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics 2, column 2 stated that all human activities aims at some good. Every art and human inquiry and similarly every actions and pursuit is taught to aim at some good and for this reason the good has been rightly declared as that at which all things aim. What is eudaimonia? It comes from the Greek word eu, meaning good, and daimon, meaning spirit. It refers to the good life marked by happiness and excellence. It is also the flourishing life filled with meaningful endeavors that empower the human persons to be the best versions of themselves. Example of eudaimonia is, if you are a student, you have to be the best versions of student by studying well and fulfilling the demands of school. Aristotle's view of good life The activity of the souls in accordance with virtue, it believes that good for humans is the maximum realizations of what was unique to humans. The good for humans was to reason well. The task of the reason was to teach humans how to act virtuously and the exercise faculties in accordance with virtue. Virtues. It is the dispositions to behave in the right manner and as a mean between extremes of deficiency and excess, which are vices. It is a showing high moral standard. Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics 2, Column 1. There are two kinds of virtue, which is the intellectual and moral. We learn intellectual virtues by instructions and we learn moral virtues by habit and constant practice. The virtues. Intellectual virtue. It is a theoretical and practical wisdom. Understanding, experience, and times are necessary requirements for the development of intellectual virtue. Moral virtue. It is controlled by practical wisdom, which is the ability to make the right judgment. It's on its development to how one nurtured it as habit and it can be learned. Aristotle's definitions of happiness. According to him, happiness is the ultimate ends of human action. It is that which people pursue for its own sake. Happiness consists in achieving through the course of a whole lifetime all the goods, health, wealth, knowledge, friends, and etc. that lead to the perfections of human nature and to the enrichments of human life. Science and Technology and Good Life Science and technology is also the movement towards good life. Science and technology are one of the highest expressions of human faculties which they allow us to thrive and flourish in life if we desire it. Science and technology may also corrupt a person, but grounding oneself in virtue can help an individual to be out of danger. That's all, thank you. Day everyone, I am Charina A. Hesta a third year Bachelor of Science and Hospitality Management student and I am the last reporter of group 4 and I'm going to discuss the topic when technology and human cross. Technology comes from the Greek word techni and logos 
which means art and word. Technology means discourse on arts, and it is appeared in the 17th century that make the ever-growing society mid see that technology is a some form of necessity. When we hear when we hear the word technology, the first thing that comes to our mind is that it is the most popular sense of concept nowadays. First is television. According to Contar Media in the Philippines, 92% of urban homes and 70% of rural homes own at least one television set. Mobile phones, this kind of device before is capable of 30 minutes talk time only, not like today that it is unlimited. Mobile phones are considered a must have among young Filipinos. One out of three Filipinos cannot live without a mobile phone because Filipinos love to use their mobile phones anywhere and anytime. More than half of the Filipinos population owned at least one mobile phone regardless of type. Computers and laptops Not possible for all Filipino families to own at least one computer or laptop. Most profits gained by the computer and laptop manufacturers came from offices, businesses, or schools. Growing number of internet users in the Philippines is a big problem regarding the internet providers. So, this is the first portable computer released on June 1981 by the OBS by the Osborne Computer Corporation. The Osborne One is considered to be the first true portable full-featured computer. Robotics and Humanity Robot is an actuated mechanism programma programmable in two or more access with a degree of autonomy. Moving within its environment to perform intended tasks. Autonomy is an ability to, to perform intended tasks based on current and sensing without human intervention. There are three types of robots. First is the service robot. Service robots that perform useful tasks for humans or equipment excluding industrial automation application. Second, personal service robot or service robot for personal use. It is a robot used for a non-commercial task. Example, domestic servant robot, personally mobility, assessed robot, and pit exercising robot. The third is the professional service robot or a service robot for professional. It is a robot used for commercial tasks, usually operated by a properly trained operator. Example, the clearing robot for public places and the delivery robot in offices or hospitals. In one way or another, each person in the society is directly or indirectly affected by technology whether he wills it or not. Most people survive their everyday lives with great reliance to the different technological advancement already available in the masses. Technology is already an inevitable part of the society. Because especially now that we are in the pandemic, technology is a very big help to the society. Because of technology, like cell phone, laptops, and computers, we can still continue to study and work.
mobile phones, computers, and laptops, these are the technological devices are some of the most popular and most commonly used types of devices across all age groups. People all over the world use these technologies every day to accomplish different purposes. And that would be all. Thank you.